Hey guys, welcome to Stock Talk on August 16th. And as you guys know, this will be the last Stock Talk of this week. And then we'll come back on Sunday for that weekend Stock Talk edition as always. So I want to welcome everyone, whether you guys are new to this channel or if you're returning back, uh, welcome to the family of traders that we've built a very positive community on and let's keep this growing. So let's start with the SPY or the spider which tracks the S&P 500 as always, right? Looking at general market movement. So first off, I will take you guys to the intraday chart and you guys can see last night and over the aftermarket period, pre-market period, we started gapping higher. And you guys can see this gap uh, that we made. And by the time that the markets open, we were already considerably higher. Um, the, the Dow was already a couple hundred points um, higher, as you guys know. And look at this. We've had a line situated as the resistance at 284, and today we managed to break this line. We broke over the resistance, and what happened? Well, we came up to the 285 mark, but we came down, retested the support, retested the support, and what happened? We ended the closing day pretty much right at the support. What have we been talking over and over again? Markets are attracted to... Da, 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 right? Previous support or resistance areas. In this case, you guys can see we finally managed after, um, you know, quite some time. Well, actually, just a period of week, but quite, you know, you guys can see that we had trouble coming up over here, but all, all of a sudden we managed to pull higher after this drop. So, guys, we talked about in yesterday's video on the one year yearly chart what kind of candle we made a tail candle at the 20 period moving average, and I gave you guys two possibilities the first possibility was what shown by this box here and you guys can see that the first possibility was for a retest of the support did that happen no what was the second possibility well the second option was we just continue on higher because we formed a reversal area regardless both cases pull uh, pointed towards a bullish trajectory back up and the second option played out so you guys can see that today pretty nice up day now the one thing you guys want to keep in mind is the markets did make a gap area from 282.59 to 283.13 and um that's just something to keep in mind. We may, may, we don't have to, but we may come down to test it at some point, perhaps not in the near future, but that is just something that we keep in mind. Otherwise, we could be on the bullish trajectory back on the upside. And this looks like a pretty um, definitive reversal pattern back up. So again, what's the main point of argument here? Here's the light blue line situated around 286.90, and that is pretty much the all-time high for the SPY. And that is where we expect the markets to head towards once we manage to start continue trending higher. And that could be in the next few days, could be next week, of course, tomorrow's Friday. And markets overall are continuously being bullish. So uh, that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at TBIX or volatility. So here's volatility as pretty much expected. Uh, correlating with the SPY, the SPY formed a reversal pattern back to the upside. Volatility formed a reversal pattern back to the downside. And now we're going lower. So uh, really volatility can't be a play now. Uh, you know, we might go up just a little bit with volatility, but overall this is a declining pattern. It looks like at the short term that volatility is done. So just keep that in mind. All right. Um, let's take a look at 4 slash CL, which looks at crude oil futures. And uh, a couple of you guys are talking about um, specific inverse ETF. So remember guys, um, and thank you, uh, Joe, for pointing that out, is whenever I talk about 4 slash CL, which follows the ticker UWT, there's always the inverse, you know, so if crude oil is, is dropping, then the inverse or DWT is going higher. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. So whenever I talk about analysis, if I say crude oil is going down, then the inverse obviously is going to go higher. So, uh, you know, that's a correlation that 
you should know and you know you'll learn more of course in the course that is being developed as well how to trade these etfs but in the meantime for slash cl um here's crude oil futures i'm going to take you guys actually to the 180 day chart and we pointed out that this was a what this was a bear flag formation and you guys can see that the bear flag formation played out to the downside can you guys see that now what are we doing we're trying to edge higher possibly forming the next bear flag so here we go here's the resistance area that i'm looking at for crude oil at 65.82 does it have to get there um, immediately no right we just had a big drop yesterday certainly doesn't have to drop tomorrow we could give it a little more time before it drops again uh, but that's something to note because crude oil is a, on a very bearish trajectory and it looks like it's going to continue to drop taking you guys to the one year chart you guys can see that all of a sudden you know here's the support line corresponding with a 200 period moving average and we saw a small bounce up today this is a perfectly normal um uh bearish uh formation that's in the making so um you know one thing that you guys are talking about is also gush and drip so joe i'll take one of your tickers which is drip um uh, so remember drip and gush do correspond to oil and gas exploration doesn't correspond with crude oil one to one but does correspond with the index spsiop so uh, let's take a look at drip. So we talked about drip in previous videos. As a matter of fact, some of you guys did mention it and we said that drip is on an uptrend. All of a sudden we saw that area of reversal, which you know makes sense because crude oil is falling. So here's drip. You guys can see it made a low of 497. We're looking at the um, you know yearly chart and you guys can see that all of a sudden we've broken on to off um, on top of the major resistance area of around seven dollars and 29 cents it's at seven dollars and 36 so overall i think drip is a good play in the near future are we overextended we are a little overextended as you can see uh right now but yeah this is a you know this is one that we should certainly be interested in as crude oil you know and as crude oil could potentially push lower uh, all right what's next four slash ng so here's natural gas guys uh, here's the resistance at 2.988 now i will show you guys the chart of ugaz which follows natural gas in a moment but look at natural gas today we came down upon uh inventory reports i believe and that's perfectly normal right we were near the resistance you know are we out of the bearish or bullish pattern yet the answer is no but we talked about how we should release our some of our profits at least at the top right because we're nearing the area of resistance so you guys can see that natural gas even though we're not out of the bullish trajectory has made um you know has came to come down just a tad bit so ugaz which goes with natural gas you guys can see that guys i really <laughs> you know i told you guys many times but i really don't change these uh, resistance lines um and this resistance line has been at 70 dollars for uh quite some time you guys can see we pretty much almost hit 70 dollars on this day two days ago and now we're coming back down so actually on this chart it looks like natural gas is looking slightly more bearish but you guys um also know that this is an area of support around this area 63 to 64 dollars i marked this quite a long time ago i think uh during this day uh, in terms of a support area, you guys can see we touched it and what happened? We bounced up, even though we're still, but we're still coming down. Regardless, what can you expect for natural gas? Well, this is the near term support. So we certainly could have another up move and, you know, potentially recover. But in the meantime, you have to be cautious if you're in natural gas because this could be the leg down. Natural gas does, has had a quite a ways up. So, you know, if you guys took advantage, since we talked about this reversal pattern, you still would have made over 9%. So, you know, at this time, just think about where you are if you are in natural gas. Finally, the one that is really interesting is 4 slash GC gold futures. Now, I'm going to take you guys um, intraday to gold futures, and I, I'm sure everyone was watching this uh, last night. Perhaps a lot of you, maybe not everyone. But gold futures dipped, but look at this reversal signal at the very least um, that was made, you know, during aftermarket hours. And we formed a reversal signal at 1167, we went higher, but all of a sudden we're starting to decline again. What is it in the big picture that are, we are looking for right now? Gold on the yearly chart has made a tail candle okay so you're like that's pretty good right kevin isn't that pretty good that's 
okay that could signal a short-term uptrend however where are we right now well i don't have a mark support right here so which means either the market defined a support for me this time around which is fine but i'll we'll need to take it with a grain of salt but there's certainly a, another potential should it just recover a little bit to continue on further regardless you guys can see that gold formed a reversal candle but gold still fell today and what happened when gold fell we saw JNUG or JNUG continue to fall. And this was the ETF that follows gold. You guys can see how JNUG fell to a low of 722. So you have to ask yourself, is this the time to get into JNUG if we saw a reversal candle on the future? And the answer has to be no, right? This is on an active period of decline. We still see no sign of reversal on this ETF. And therefore, we can't be bullish on this one. Um, so that's... That's that. Oh, but guys, if you guys are enjoying these videos, as always, uh, feel free to hit that like button. If you didn't like these videos, that's perfectly fine with me, but I do hope that you find some value in it in the future. Um, I do do it for you guys pretty much every day, so hopefully uh, you do enjoy it for your viewing pleasure. All right, let's get to your tickers, as always. So we're going to take off with um, one of the tickers that I missed uh, yesterday I'm sorry about that, Dawei. So uh, is ANF. So ANF, once again, you guys can see that earnings are coming up uh, at the end of the month. That's one thing to keep in mind. And then another thing is you guys can see that this is a pretty nice pattern for the most part. This is a bull flag formation, as you guys can see. Um, with a lower high you know on the near term and the lower low near term the one thing that you guys want to be cautious of is the candle that was made yesterday um, was a reversal candle and you guys can see that it was reversing attempting to re reverse back down today we managed to actually keep on top this is actually pretty interesting that we managed to keep on top of this um, this line this previous resistance line so what are we looking for for this one those for this is Abercrombie and Fitch um, we're looking for a couple more days this is just not enough information you know because today great we we stood above potentially a new support but if we give it a couple more days and see it play out especially since earnings are coming up you can imagine that that could be the catalyst back up or that could be a catalyst back down it's it's a little dangerous right now because if you imagine if you got in right now and this wasn't the support the decline could be fast and swift and could catch you off guard for you know so and that's just something you have to keep in mind all right uh, Luis, um, I just took a put option on Alibaba right before the reversal. I've made 150%. Congratulations. Uh, I'm out of day trades until tomorrow, but thanks a lot. Congratulations, Luis. Um, I personally don't do options, but since you did do options, I'm sure you were referring to the Alibaba analysis that we've done earlier. Um, congratulations on, you know, um, you know, doing this because we saw a broke break of trend i took off the trend line as a matter of fact and now um we're at the near-term support so great job luis uh joe thank you for your comment addy boy um uh, very interesting move by tlsyy bottom map potential to higher up so here's ts tls why why and the one thing you guys want to be cautious of is the volume is extremely low as a matter of fact it's less than a hundred thousand shares uh traded per day and therefore this is not something i would certainly want to trade you guys can see how um there's barely any volume involved in the daily chart uh so there's you know this is not something that we can trade this can be easily manipulated so this up move whatever it was garnering the up move whether it was earnings or something else um you know this one can go down as fast as it's going up uh you guys can see it's going down now it's going slightly higher but surely it can play out to the downside uh, and can continue to play up that way uh ben um Thank you for talking about that. So Ben and Joe, I think you guys had very similar comments. So we did talk about uh, some inverse ETFs. Uh, great call out. And then Zhang, thank you for your comment as always. I uh, do try to um, provide the best analysis possible. And Jason, thank you for that. Look, guys, luck out. thank you for all the compliments. I love it. <laughs> uh, uh, and then is that it? I, you know, I think, um, hold on. That might be it, right? Guys. That is it for today's analysis. And, um, you know, uh, one more ticker I'll take you guys to see is Walmart. And interestingly enough, <laughs> this chart looks very lopsided. I apologize for this. But 
look at this. Here's earnings, right? Right, very good on earnings and Walmart 10 percent higher pretty much did sell off during the day because we're, where did we land ourselves we land ourselves towards the gap area which was a resistance area but overall you know walmart looks pretty stellar uh in the near term because the chart does look a little lopsided i would wait for this one to play out just a little longer before an, a possible entry into this area um if you were not in the initial up move um i would wait you know if you're trying to think about entering walmart perhaps wait a little bit but in the meantime guys thank you for watching all of these videos i think we've tackled all of the tickers that you guys submitted um, as well as the tickers i want to talk about in the commodities so uh, have a great trading day tomorrow friday and i will see you guys on sunday for another stock talk uh yeah that's it and happy trading